My friends, here we are today for a special meeting here. The OPEF discography tier list. And this is, is really different, way different. Um, I will rank the OPEF discography soon, very soon. But here, a different, because I, I think you can, man, it's impossible to mix up the old era uh, of OPEF and the new era. So you need three categories here. First, first era, clean progressive rock era, epic lineup era with Steel Wilson, you know what I mean? These are the three eras I will rank. So, about the first era, the weaker record is Orchid, but listen, I like this record. This is barely sufficient. This is on the brink of the sufficiency. And this is a very good, very good record to me. I like Orchid a lot, especially the, the, the best song of this record, the song that is starting the record. It missed she was standing. And listen, my friends, this is not at all a boring record. Never. It's not boring. The songs are long, but there is a, a nice attitude inside the record that th this album is compact. Even if, man, even if the tracks are very long sometimes, the only track that is disconnected is Forest of October. The only track that I can't get because of this disconnection and also silhouette track is a bit senseless because only piano even if very good in a record that sounds in a total different way the story inside the record is a man spooky and tremendous story again so this is pretty good this is for me in a ranking this is barely a six out of ten 5.56 out of 10, but in the first era, this is the last one. Then we got Morning Rise. This record for the production is weaker of Orchid. So you can do this thing here if you think about the production and the man and the compact structure of the, the record. Of course, Morning Rise is more disconnected sometimes also because of the content. There is a song dedicated to the grandfather, there is a song dedicated to his ex-girlfriend, and there is a song, Black Rose Immortal, very long, 24 minutes, that is maybe a, an old song, a 1991 song that um, came here, I don't know why, however, you have got here uh, to bid you farewell song, the last one, that is the most gorgeous song of the two, two records. And also the, si the Night and the Silent Water is a beautiful song. Black Rose Immortal, I know a lot of fans are loving this song, but for me it's a kind of melting pot, or if you want, it's a kind of medley of a lot of little pieces of music stick it together, so not my favorite track. In the old era, My Arms, Your Hers is here. This means that it's better. Demon of the Fall. Only this, this song is an 11 out of 10 in a ranking. The record is not my favorite, this one, at all. Sometimes I prefer the De Farfalla bass lines in the first two records and also uh, man, the story is not so attractive for me than other stories inside a concept album however uh, here the Amen Corner, Karma and especially Demon of the Fall are my favorite tracks April Ethereal very powerful and man evil riffs so these ones stay here because of course uh there is a growth of the band 
untouchable. But the best record, hands down, on the fir on, of the first era, and I think maybe also the best record ever by Opeth. This is my favorite record ever. This is the only record I rank a 10 out of 10. Is the life record. Oh, the story is amazing and every song here, you, you, you can't, I mean, you're listening to this record every time front to back, every time front to back. You are never, never shifting, never. And you, you don't need shifting. This is the best concept album ever. The story inside is intriguing and this is the perfection. I mean, this is uh, a most genuine, a more genuine Blackwater Park and crazy riffs, crazy melodic sessions, so beautiful, so hunting and acoustic guitar everywhere, a couple of ballads inside, evilness, pain, beautiful music, you have everything you want inside here, excellent drumming, incredible uh, guitar work especially and the voice here is doing the perfect combination between growling and melodies this is the first era my ranking of the first era uh, clean progressive rock era the era that is closing for uh, for now the career of, of Opeth I mean the last epilogue of the Opeth career. The worst one is Heritage. That is also for me uh, the weaker Opeth record. This is really boring, especially when you come in the middle of the record with X process and folklore and Nefenti and other episodes at the end of this record and also the intro with the piano is senseless and boring. You can save here Slither because a big energy and as a punk rocket myself I like it. Uh, I feel the dark maybe you can save and also the Devil's Orchard for some reasons but it's not the masterpiece that someone is talking about. For me this is the weaker record in the Opeth career, very experimental they were not ready for this one stay here the last one of the clean progressive rock era there you got sorceress sorceress is way better because you have here um, more energy for me there's a lack of inspiration in some tracks but uh, i think it's not totally uninspired as some sessions inside heritage record sorceress best tracks are the self-titled track but especially willow of the wisp willow of the wisp is my favorite one and i go checking this song several times also the covers i can find on youtube are all beautiful willow of the wisp is the best song maybe inside here also the wildflower is not bad at all and sometimes you're enjoying also chris alice uh, strange brew I don't like era. Era song, a lot of people are talking about era. To me is, is redundant and repetitive, especially in the start, then nice ending, but whoever. Mm, the seventh sojourn for me is an underrated and misunderstood track. Not bad. But the muddy production of this record, yeah, this is not a, a beautiful production. Um, forcing is forcing me to stay here with this record. Then we've got In Calda Venenum. I like this record a lot. I like this record, especially the song Nets of Kin, the song number four. <laughs> I love it. And this record is made in two versions the English version and the uh, Swedish version and I suggest you even if you are uh, English speakers I suggest you really the Swedish version because this one 
his talks in Sweden version and it sounds better. However, I like this record a lot. This is experimental but good. The guitars are sometimes impressive. The bass work is something very creative and the drumming is very good but uh, man, the production of this record, the drumming, the excellent drumming of Martin Axelrod here is not surrounding everything like sometimes in some episode of Heritage. Here is very good and there is an hunting atmosphere, very beautiful and all things will pass and Dignity song, Heart in Hand is not my favorite, Heart in Hand, but um, you've got a lot of tracks and I like also Continuum track and also Charlatan. So this is a record that I like. This is experimental, but in a good way. And the best, hands down, the best record of the first era for me, oh, the new progressive rock lean era is for me, Pale Communion record. This one, this one is the more inspired record of the new era. This is the second clearing record of the new era, 2014 record after Heritage, but this is way better for me. You have a couple of songs, but maybe four songs that are masterpieces here. The best one is maybe Moon Above, Sun Below, but it's a big battle with Cusp of Eternity. Beautiful track. And also Eternal, Eternal Rain Will Come, the first track that is opening the record is a genius track. Progress is rock at his best, but in an opath sausage, you know what I mean? Because, yeah, here uh, is, you, you, you can't really recall the opath style, but in the progressive rock try that is perfect here. Beautiful voice in Cusp of Eternity, Eternal Ray Wing Come, and especially Moon Above, Sun Below, and also The River is another banger of a song. Eliza Woes is not bad at all. Um, also Goblin is pretty good. I'm not a lover of the last track, but of course this record deserves a big votation. This is one of my favorites overall. And so this, I, I think this one deserves to stay here. Uh, the middle era, uh, yeah. The middle era when Steven Wilson discovered and listened to Still Life and then decided to produce Blackwater Park, the first uh, perfectly produced record by Opet. So this is the era 2001-2008, you know what I mean? Epic lineup era, even if Lopez uh, and Lindgren went away in Watershed Record. However, the roast here for me of the new era, but the roast is not, not, a, good, not a good word, is damnation. A lot of people are going mad for this one. I'm not going mad for this one. I prefer the open idea to combine powerful, uh, arch voice with melodies but this one that I hated the first time I listened to this one now I like a lot especially but but I like the fir the fourth track uh, window pane is very beautiful and is their more appreciated song here but in my time of need for me is even better and also that uh, that whisper a lullaby was the song that conquered me the first time I was listening to this one. Enclosure is maybe my favorite of this record because of the excellent Middle East rhythm there. I like it a lot, really a lot. So for me, Damnation is a very good record, but at the end, especially the song Weakness is letting me down a lot. In the last three tracks of this record, uh, are not giving me the same impact of the first four tracks. So this is the reason why this one stay here and also because you have to be in the right mood to appreciate this one. I mean, especially late night, this is the perfect listen.
Then we go with Deliverance. Deliverance, I like a lot this record. This stay high in my, even if the production is bad here. Yeah, this is the worst production in this middle era. You know what I mean? The epic lineup with Mendes, with Lopez, with Lindgren, with Mick Lackerfeld, and also, ah, uh, man. And also with keyboard player, but then all Axelrod and Okason are coming with Watershed, but I consider this one the middle era, before the progressive rock era. And Deliverance is very good. I love the song Wreath, underrated song, the first one that is opening uh, the record. This one, it seems you are in a man. In a purgatory, listening the spirits, lamentations. This is very impressive. But of course, the favorite track is Deliverance, even if I go mad also for Master Apprentices. Wow, what an heavy song! And the riffs, this is amazing. Also, A Fair Judgment is a pretty good song. And I, I, I don't understand totally the intermission you have. And by the saying, by the pain, I sing the others. I think this song, uh, man, is not complete for some reason in the work, especially in the equalization, but this is maybe the heaviest track and the most spooky and scary track ever by Opeth. So pretty good deliverance stay there. Then I go with Watershed, the last one of this harsh voice growling era. I think here Opeth are giving all, Mikko Lackerfeld is giving you everything he still have of these abrasive um, man of this big big impact and yeah he's, he's giving you everything he has he still have with growling session here but burden is the best song even if i adore hessian peel song and of course the start with coil hair parent is impressive Hey, Red Parent, you have also a trash session of the song, trash metal session, beautiful outro. And of course, the Lotus Eater. Wow, I love this song. Porcelain Art, Porcelain Heart is a pretty good song, but not, uh, man, a, a little commercial in the sound at some point. And, X Omega, wonderful, wonderful intro, but then it's a kind of, uh, man, it's a kind of medley of the other tracks. However, I like this record, Watershed, but it's not my favorite. Sometimes too much brutal, but wow, Burden song, a Siam Peel song, the crazy track. The Lotus Heater is incredible, the drum work and how can you ever even imagine to compose a song like this one? I think this is the most crazy composition and the genius composition. And also Coil Air Parent, the start is very beautiful of this record. Then I go with Blackwater Park. Blackwater Park is without any doubt uh, the second best of this epic lineup era and maybe the most famous record, the first one produced by Steven Wilson and the record that, man, gave fame to Opeth. This record is fantastic. Here you have some of my favorite tracks ever. I mean, The Drapery Falls, The Drapery Falls is maybe my favorite song ever by Opeth, maybe. Uh, Blackwater Park self-titled track comes second and Harvest comes third in my, in, in, yeah, in my podium, but also Bleak song, a nine out of 10, of course, this song. 
I prefer Mikkel Ackerfeld voice than Steven Wilson voice, but beautiful song, also bleak. And then you got the Lipper Affinity that is not bad at all. Also Dirge, Dirge for November is a good track, but you are falling down a bit with the midsection, with the intermission, with funeral portrait that is a stunning track because of the first riff and the solos there but I'm not loving the ending of this record except for the impressive uh, epic final track Blackwater Park so I think the record is starting huge with the Leper Affinity, Bleak, Harvest and the Drapery Falls that is my favorite one but then a little going down of the record with Dirge of, for November and the midsection intermission and also the funeral portrait. And then you are back with Blackwater Park. However, the story is amazing. This is, man, a gothic record, death metal record. I love it. And the best one for me of this uh, era here, the epic lineup era with Steven Wilson era, for me here, the best one is hands down Ghost Reveries record. But there is a problem also with this record here, Ghost Reveries. I mean, I, man, I, I, I really go insane for five tracks of this record. Ghost of Perdition is maybe the best ever song ever made in the metal scene. Reverie, Harlequin Forest is the song that made me felt in love with this record. The beautiful melody of this song is fantastic, this song and the outro is underrated. Wow! The Grand Conjuration is, man, pure terror and an incredible song. Wow! And the production of this record is the best one in this era, better than Watershed, better than Blackwater Park. The production here is just perfect. The production here stay with Damnation as the best production of this middle life Opeth era. Uh, the Bang of the Hounds is a song that I can listen maybe 10 times a day or maybe 20 times a day. I love that song there. Incredible progression. Wow. And Beneath the Mire. Oh my God. The growth of the rhythm, of the speed at some point, Beneath the Mire is impressive song also this one. So these five tracks I can't listen all day long. I can listen all day long really. I, I'm able to listen all day long these five tracks but Isolation Hears, Atonement and the other clean track uh, are not giving me the same emotions are giving the harsh tracks here. I mean, I, 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 I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be stupid or selective too much, but I really think that the most interesting clean track is the Atonement, because really different, weird kind of mantra, Zen mantra, but if you think about clean tracks, I really prefer Burden from Watershed, or a fair judgment at some point from Deliverance and a harvest from Blackwater Park and Benighted or Face of Melinda from the first era Still Life record and maybe also Credence from My Arms Your Ears, maybe also. And of course, Window Pain or In My Time of Need or Death Whisper the Lullaby or closure from damnation if I'm going checking some clean stuff 
This is beautiful, the record goes reveries. This is the best one for me of the epic lineup era, the Steven Wilson era. But for me, this is the last one with Lindgren and Lopez there. But I think that five tracks are masterpieces. And the other one, the other tracks are not so good. So, my podium of the best records are Still Life, my first record, Ghost Reveries, second, Blackwater Park, third, Watershed, fourth, Pill Communion, fifth, Deliverance, sixth. Without any doubt, this is my, and in Cuddle Vendum, the seventh. This is my, my ranking, of course, but in this third list, first era, best record still life, then my arms here, here, the hers, then morning rise, then orchid. The clean progressive rock era, best record is pale communion, then in cadavenum, then sorceress, then heritage. That is my is the worst record for me in all open discography for my testes. And in the epic line era, Steven Wilson era with Lopez and Lindgren, but then also with the first record with Alkesson and Axelrod. The best one is Ghost Reveries, then Blackwater Park, then Watershed, then Deliverance, then Damnation. This is my opinion. This is my Opeth tier list. My friends. Oh, yeah. And I explained you the criterials. I'm doing this one here. I think this one is perfect. Perfect. See you next time, my friends. Ciao, ciao, amici. Alla prossima. Vi voglio bene. Ciao.